Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. That means very simple that I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Today we're dealing with the Christian Judas, the plight of the church as an unfaithful spouse. It sounds very harsh when we talk about the Christian Judas. A Christian oxymoron exposed restorative justice, PMS, which stands for physical, mental, and spiritual, what God created us in, versus PMS, which stands where Belzebub uses politics, money, and spirituality or religion in order to confuse people that are looking to follow the way, the truth, and the light. Are the living scriptures a Christian doctrinal dilemma? We will break it down for those uncomfortable with the word doctrinal. It is a body of principles or values presented to accept belief. In other words, some people like to say they try to indoctrinate you. When questions continue about human or man-made beliefs which act as obstacles, what do you do? Is there a difference? between a spiritual church and a carnal church? Does one see the hand of God at work in ways not recognized by the people of the simple faith? It's amazing. Those are different questions. And some people have no clue what I'm talking about because they don't even go to church. But I'm talking about people that have been thinking, what am I living for? Who am I living for? And is there sense in this whole life because with the pandemic you most of the time will be confronted with issues that are very hard to answer so let's take a look and see how we can come up with the answers that might help you So when do you know if you have some corrupted ideas of other people have corrupted your ideas by man-made doctrines? If you're not following the original gospel teachings, what are they? What are you following? Is it too late to warn modern Christianity that many of their foundational beliefs are poisonous? They are alien to the original teachings of Jesua? modifying a range of long-held beliefs when you compare what Jesua 
taught, just so I just for the record, was the person that came along and he taught a lot of people a different way of living. He taught them the way, the truth and the light. And he got disciples like Peter, Paul and John, Thomas, people that were looking to serve God. And a lot of them came out of the Essene community. The Essenes were people that were legitimately searching for God, to serve God, to act on the law of God. A principal warning from the Bible, and a dangerous one, is actually to ignore it. Because a lot of people had wondered, what in the world am I doing with the faith? See, during that time, there were a lot of wooden gods, gods made out of stone, people praying to weird stuff. They were sacrificing little babies. The blood of that baby was supposed to cleanse them from their misery and give them an opportunity to become rich. If you were a senator, you were a person of power. If you were a slave driver, you were a person of power. But if you were a slave or if you were a person that had no money, then you had a problem. And that sounds almost like today. Today we have a similar situation. If you are not in politics, if you are not a professor or a doctor or a policeman, you might not have had the opportunity to even get yourself a title. Then you have a problem. And yet there is a directive that Jesua taught his people. And you know what it was? The principal warning that he said, no servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will devote to the one and despises the other. Maybe you have heard it. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesua. He said to them, you are the ones who justify yourself in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. What one highly valued among men is detestable in God's eyes, in God's sight. And today we have the same problem. We see it happening in the White House, in the US of A. A man that has been rejected by half of the population of America, the voting people. People that had a vote came out and about 7 million more votes were for Mr. Biden. And he is now the president-elect. And President Trump, a one-term president, is furious and doing whatever it is possible to stay in the White House, except acting like a man, acting like he concerns for people. When he says, all oh, Canada, no, he's never said that. He said, America, number one. But with America, he means him. It appears that right now there are investigations going on for $1.2 billion that was his war chest to be elected. $600 million has been diverted to the private chambers of Mr. Trump, a private war chest. It seems that Mr. Trump is only motivated by money. He claims he has a little bit of a problem that people don't like him. But when you lie every day, when you cheat every day, when you steal every day, and you keep on claiming that you're doing it to the benefit of the other people, you either are deranged or you have a major problem. You're living in the wrong country because there are countries where you can go and steal and do whatever you want to because nobody cares as long as you're stronger than the other. But the reality in life is there is nothing hidden. We just do not possess the spiritual eyes and the ears to perceive what is beyond the barrier of these three-dimensional issues in our world. We are controlled, and the majority of people understand that. I use the PMS as an example. When God created us, he had a purpose. He wanted a physical human being. So Adam and Eve, Adam got created and Eve came shortly thereafter. They were mentally able to talk with each other. And spiritually, they were designed to live forever. And then there came an interruption. A little, psst, psst, are you sure? And Beelzebub, or the angel, 
called Lucifer. He interacted and he made sure because he was jealous. He did not want them in the presence of the Lord. And what the majority of people did not see nor understood was that God's word is law. And so when God interrupted the development of Adam and Eve, and when I say interrupted, they got booted out of the paradise. And why was that? It took a couple of hundred years later. There was a fellow by the name of Adam that had failed God. And then one of his sons, Enoch, he was close with God and he walked with God for 365 years. And then God said, come with me. He was the father of Methuselah, who lived almost a thousand years. So then gradually somebody showed up. There was a man of God and his name was Father Abraham. He loved God for what he was. God was an awesome God. And God said, you are my friend. And he was going to bless him. He was going to use him. And out of that came the group called the Jewish people. They were the blessed ones. They were the ones that were connected with one God. But the surrounding population, they were idolizing all kinds of different gods. And eventually out of the group of most, sorry, out of the group of Father Abram came a man by the name of Moses. And Moses was brought up in the Egyptian court. He became and was treated like a king because he was one of the sons of the king. And as such, he got a tremendous education. He was a trained soldier. He was a man with great wisdom. But one thing he had a problem with, his temper. And when he saw some injustice, he got so mad, he was going to take some action. And he killed the men, whether by accident, but he ran and he knew that was not allowed. And as he ran into the desert, he was around 40 years of age. God trained him during that 40 years. And after 40 years, Moses became the man of God. He had learned to become a prodigal son and seek the presence of the Lord. And that deed that Moses did, he changed the course of history by following the morals, the ethics, and the values of God Almighty. Because God was looking for people that he could complete the covenant that he started with Adam and Eve. And when Moses was called up to go to the mountain and to receive the covenant for the children of light, because that is what God envisioned, they were going berserk. They were drunk. They were dancing just the way they saw in Egypt. And Moses destroyed the stones. And when God said, I understand, don't worry. He got 10 commandments. And those were the stones written with a law. And what most people don't realize is the law of the covenant was a different covenant than the 10 commandments. The 10 commandments that was the for if you failed the Ten Commandments, you were doomed to fail and die. But if you had a covenant with God, that was on a whole different level. And again, for 2,000 years almost, before Jesua came, and he fulfilled the law of God. And when he died on the cross, he said, Father, it is done. What was done? The restorative justice between God and mankind, that was done. And in the grace, in God's grace, he said, well done, you good and faithful servant. Jesua was as the first one, the first human being. He was elevated. And God says, this is the way, the truth and the light. And in that way, the people that were trained, the people that were the disciples of Jesua, they were the ones that followed with tremendous fervor to be like Jesua. And sticking to that example, we see that there was a tremendous revival. People changed, people moved on till we got the year 325. For one strange reason, there was a person by the name of Serapis in three 
75 BC, when Alexander the Great was dying, they were praying and coming from them, praying to that God, the God of the underworld, to see if there was a chance to get our friend Alexander the Great back up. And when that didn't happen, they called the people that followed Serapis, the God of the underworld, they called themselves Christians. And the Bishop of Christians, he was a follower of the God of Serapis. And then 325 years later, actually 700 years almost, at 325 AD, that was Anno Domino in the year of the Lord. In other words, when they started counting, they took it from zero. And 325 years later, that was after Jesus was gone to his father. He had risen out of the death, the first person. We have now a major problem because Christianity was under attack. They had one option. Most of the Jewish people were killed off, murdered, or were just on the run. And therefore it was the Goyim, the people that were non-Jews, they were in charge. And they were threatened if they would not follow the directions, the degree, the law of the Emperor of Rome, Constantine I, they would be killed off in the arena. And so all they did was serve. What do you want us to do? Just say that you love Jesus. Okay, we love Jesus. And they were a Christian. But the Christian, the theme of Christianity had nothing to do with Jesus. Because the way, the truth and the life, that was what God Almighty had set up. Because God had a special purpose. Because as you followed the way, the truth and the light, you were back again in the presence of God and God personally would teach you. And over a course of time, you would learn to walk like Jesus, Jesua HaMashiach. Most of you know him as Jesus. And the beauty of it was that God personally would work with you. He would teach you. He would guide you, would help you to be victorious, no matter what was happening. And so when that didn't happen, and when the people called themselves Christians because the messenger, Jesua HaMessiah, they started praying to him, they had a little problem because now they were doing exactly what Adam and Eve were doing in the paradise. They did not listen to what God said. And when the Jewish people were not listening to Moses, they were disobedient. Guess what? The Roman Catholic Church was born. In Nicaea, 325 AD, they were amalgamating with paganism, with pagans, with gods, false gods. And God said there is one God and it is him. And so when we get the basic pagan beliefs, then you wonder what in the world is going on? We now have today an understanding that if you love God, you keep his commandments. That is what Yeshua said. He said, and when you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not these things, which I say, then I don't know you. You see, what the pagans believed is we hope to break through the fundamental paganisms for those confused of searching for answers. Remember, every pagan is different, and we will have variations in their thoughts or beliefs, something different for the next pagan. There was one way that God had given the way. So what isn't pagan? It had different meanings for in different over in different centuries. First, the rich who converted to Christianity used it in the Middle Ages to label country dwellers who did not alter their faith. In the 21st century, pagan refers to anyone who follows a trust outside of the three Abrahamic religions like Christianity. Islam and Judaism. What are some of the common pagan beliefs? And this is where the problem is, folks. I went to Bible school. I went to seminary. I studied religion. I practiced religion. I worked for 12 years as a preacher, as an evangelist, mostly in maximum security prisons around the world and in Holland. And you know what there was? 
what I discovered that pagan customs include all kinds of practices, social conversions common to and regulate the lives of pagans. The traditions were religious festivals, temple architecture, the dress, the greetings in the marketplace. Like for instance, I worked for 12 years as a self-defense in Canada, in court with my wife, because I had stepped up and said to a friend who was a Freemason, no, little did I know that he was the head of the Freemasons. And for 12 years, they basically challenged us in everything. I spent millions of dollars in defense, but I ended up defending ourselves for 12 years because we ran out of money. I lost everything, including the case. But you know what? Since we were built on the rock of, from the, of the foundation, Yeshua HaMashiach, I learned to continue to fight because I was not fighting by myself. God says, I am with you. And you know what we won? We won the appeal. And again, it was impossible in the eyes of men because nobody was successful in it. But I do not listen to everyone. I listen to God Almighty. Was I wrong in appealing? Everyone said so. But when we won, we went out on appeal. And you know, appeal means something very simple that when a judge acts a certain way, he will be challenged on the fact that his judgment was biased or what he did was wrong. And on that we won. Thus there is a belief necessary that's very important. But what is your belief based on? So the man's viewpoint had little value in the eyes of God. See, God says, this is what I want you to do. You follow the way, the truth and the light. But if you do not listen, what other ways are there? Then there is the way from the pagan, Satan, and you're following Satan. And what we find out is in Christianity that if you call yourself a Christian like I used to do most of my life because I am 70 plus now. I was born in 1950 and it was 2020, the end of December 2020. So for most of my life I thought I was a Christian based on the fact that I was serving what? And this is where the problem was and came about. During this whole court procedure, I learned to understand the law, what proof means, evidence, and what precedence means. And the Bible says that no servant can be a slave to two masters, for he will either hate the first and love the second, or scorn the second and be loyal to the first. He said you can't be a slave to both God and mammon, or money. See, the lust of money. The Pharisees who loved money, those were the priesthood, heard all this and were sneering at Jesua. He said to them, you justify yourself in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. Highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. So what we as mankind think is important, we will find out that in God's eyes, that is detestable. Now, I can go on and on and on. We're talking about Christmas. Where does Christmas come from? Is it really a celebration of the little baby Jesus? Or is it something we were told? And this is what I want to do. I will be dealing with little segments. What is Christmas? Now, I realize that a lot of people will say, well, who in the world are you? I am Br'er Caleb, and it is my avatar. Br'er Caleb was one of the few people that together with Joshua traveled through the desert for 40 years and he was still a young man when he was 80 and he built up his land that God had promised when he moved into the promised land and I am determined to follow the Lord. It doesn't matter that you have made many mistakes as long as you come to the same uh, understanding as I came I found out that I was not a Christian, I was a prodigal son and I was led astray because of my own thinking and based on what I accepted as truth. 
But when I discovered the truth, the way, the truth, and the light, I determined to follow the way, the truth, and the light. And God will direct you because he is your father. And that is what we're aiming for today. That God is an almighty God and he loves you. But there are a few things that you and I have to understand. And that is, we need to deal with the law. Like I was forced to understand the law. I knew the basic law. I was familiar with insurance law because I studied that in Europe for many years. I was very good at it. But then international law, when we were started trading, I learned that part. But when I was all of a sudden forced into defending ourselves in a criminal court, where you can be sentenced for many, many years like I did. I was sentenced for six years times three for saying simply no to a Freemason because the deal had nothing to do with them and they wanted the money, billions of dollars. But the reality was God is an awesome God. And as I was learning to rely on the God Almighty and no longer on what I knew and what I'd learned and to question indeed why do I do this? I found out that we all have been hoodwinked or a very good advertising campaign of Satan has been taking place for 2000 years. Because as the church, and I'm talking the Roman Catholic Church with the Gronovisor, which Pope Francis had just recently released, 53 miles of bookshelves and books and material and I got some a hold of some of the books. Those were translated out of Aramaic by somebody that spoke that language. And in 1929 he started and in, it took him 20 to 30 years to translate it. But in those books that is exactly what God wanted. The church knows, but they have hidden it because they had the knowledge and the know-how. But we have the spirit of God. And we can break through. But it is up to you and me to desire it. For God says, if we want to find the Lord, we will. But we are like a prodigal son. I was wrong. And you know what I did? I repented. Repentance is that you acknowledge your situation and go to God Almighty. Nothing hypocritical just father forgive me for i have sinned and you know what god will do he will take you under his wing and he will teach you personally but this is something that you need to share with yourself your spouse your children or if you don't have a family be fair enough to say father i need your help and remember tough times never last but tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.